10 years later and I'm finally, finally putting this thing behind me. Literally. Hello guys, how are you today? My name is David DeFranco. I hope you are enjoying your day, your night, wherever or whenever you are in the world. Thank you so much for tuning in to another video recorded straight from my iMac 2020. I've been loving this computer. And in fact, this computer inspired yet another Apple purchase, the Magic Trackpad 2. Now, I gotta be honest. The original Magic Trackpad is cool, but I never ended up really using it all that much. It's, it's not like I disliked the product, it was cool. I've just always been a physical mouse user. And actually, this, this was actually sponsored a while ago, and I'm sorry for the exposure. I just wanted to have my windows open today, just trying to mix things up. Anyway, yeah, I mean, this was actually sponsored years ago, and I'm obviously grateful for that, but I just never found myself using it, so it quite literally just sits on display over there in my, my Apple Shrine on, on, underneath my iPod Hi-Fi, which I love. Such a cool speaker system, alongside my Airport Extreme and all that stuff. So, yeah, I don't use it. It's a great product. I'm sure people love it, but I figured... It's time to give it another chance. So this iMac inspired this, the Magic Trackpad 2. I was actually in the market for a quote unquote regular mouse, such as the Magic Mouse, which definitely is not for everybody because it's entirely gesture based. I shouldn't say entirely because it does physically click right there, you know? Uh, but it, it just integrates so well with Mac OS. And if you don't use the Mac, I, I can't expect you to understand what I'm saying. I mean, at least in terms of like mission control and shortcuts you can do, like it, it really is gesture heavy and I love it for that. And then I was in the market for another mouse such as the Logitech MX Master 3, I think it's called, because I have the MX Master 2S on my Mac Pro upstairs, my 2013 Mac Pro. It's a cool mouse. If you want my honest opinion, I think it's overhyped. I mean, it, it's cool, but there's nothing really all that fancy um, about it. I mean, it, it works well, but it's not as fancy as something like this. So this is the Magic Trackpad 2. And I'm a huge, huge fan of the Force Touch Trackpad on my 2015 MacBook Pro. Very, very heavy emphasis on the 2015, guys. Five year old technology. And in my opinion, it still performs beautifully. Once you use the Force Touch Trackpad, which technically doesn't click, Guys, it literally does not click, which is cool. Like it makes it feel like it's clicking because there's a little motor inside the trackpad, hence why it's called a force touch trackpad. You quite literally apply force, but it's not actually clicking. And that just blew my mind back in 2015. And honestly, it still kind of blows my mind here in 2020. Like it's such cool technology. And while I was mouse shopping, I'm like, wait a minute. If I love the trackpad so much on my MacBook Pro, What's stopping me from enjoying that on, on, a, on a desktop Mac? Again, my iMac 2020, I love this computer. It's just opened me up again in terms of creativity. I actually love creating videos like this and hence why this video is gonna be so damn long because I like to talk, you know? And if you don't like it, fast forward, it's not a big deal. So anyway, the point of this video is to just simply unbox the Magic Trackpad 2 in space gray, by the way. It was like $149, definitely not cheap, very, very expensive. But I think if you want like the regular white version or silver, whatever Apple calls it, I think it's like $129, which is still quite a bit, uh, you, know, you know, overpriced. But hey, I mean, th this, this is Apple we're talking about. Apple users typically are not cheap. Let's just say that. So, uh, okay, let's unbox the Magic Trackpad 2. Give a little cut here. And then I will show you guys the setup process of this trackpad on my iMac and I'll show you the beauty of it. Like it really is nice being such a gesture based Mac OS. And there it is. There is the Magic Trackpad 2 in space gray. Yes, I want the whole dark look. Eventually I'm going to get the space gray version of the Magic Keyboard 2. But for now, I, I, I just couldn't justify dropping literally $300 on Apple accessories, $300, that's a lot of money. So there's the trackpad, I will finish opening that in a second. You also get, interestingly enough, a black lightning cable. This is really cool for, for uh, two reasons. Number one, it's interesting they didn't go with space gray. They, I mean, they, they just went with straight up, 
you know, black. There's no other way to say it. This is a straight up black cable. And it's also interesting because they still have not introduced USB-C supports on the Magic Trackpad. I can see that happening in the future, maybe sometime in 2021. We'll get the Magic Trackpad 3 with perhaps some kind of extra feature like a Touch ID sensor, but don't don't really hold your breath on that one. But I could definitely see it getting like a quiet update with USB-C in the future. Uh, Magic Trackpad 2 instructions manual. I just ripped that off. I don't know if we get Apple stickers with this one. And if we do, they're very, very tiny. Nah, I don't, I don't see any Apple stickers, not a big deal. Honestly, I was not expecting any. So let's put that back together. Actually, I'm gonna put the lightning cable back in here because I don't need this. I have enough lightning cables just sitting around the house. And let's put the box back together. Put that over there. By the way, here is the Magic Mouse 2. It still has that ridiculous charging mechanism on the bottom. Apple, why? Why? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, unboxing or un unwrapping at this point, unwrapping the Magic Trackpad. Oh, damn, look at that. That thing is beautiful. It's just a slate of glass over aluminum. Beautiful, simplistic design. God, I love this. This is so, so nice. We got the lightning connector right here. We have a little plastic piece right there, so that way the Bluetooth antenna can um, do its thing. And we have a little power over there. Now, I'm not gonna, okay, first, okay, hold on, hold on. It just clicked real quick. It just clicked because I turned it on. But take my word for it. When this thing is off, it quite literally does not move. Like, it does not click. You might hear a little click, that's that's actually my desk moving, I think. But if we turn it on, now it's clicking. That is so, so cool. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to switch over to my iMac screen and show you how to properly set up the Magic Trackpad 2. Okay, here we are on my desktop. By the way, I'm using ScreenFlow 8. For some reason, it wouldn't record, so I had to restart my iMac and now it's fine. It just needed permissions, which we're on, but I think it was a glitch on ScreenFlow's end. But uh, anyway, if you're looking for an excellent recording app, definitely check out ScreenFlow. It's not cheap, it's definitely not cheap, but man, will I tell you, nothing comes close. And yes, I realize you can technically record your screen using QuickTime Player, which works fine for most people, but I'm the kind of user who wants more, you know? I want more, um, and ScreenFlow just exceeds, exceeds in that area. Anyway, that aside, because I know I'm gonna have someone asking, David, what are you using to record? ScreenFlow, it's incredible software, check it out. Okay, so the Magic Trackpad should be connected, let me see. Actually, it's not. All right, so let's go down here to System Preferences using my Magic Mouse 2, and let's click on Bluetooth. And it might appear, I don't know. So let me turn the trackpad off and turn it on again. I might get an option to connect up. There it is, connect. And wow, that was easy. All right, so let's go down the trackpad now that we're connected. As you can see, Apple gives you these little videos showing you what does what, which is really nice. It's such an elegant way of introducing your user to this super cool tech. All right, so with three fingers, if you swipe up, let's just open up Safari, Final Cut Pro 10, and TweetBot. If you swipe up with three fingers by default, it brings up Mission Control, which shows you all of your apps. So, so cool. Now let's go to Twitter. And just like the trackpad on my MacBook Pro, if I force touch, or force click rather, force click on a uh, word, it should give me the definition. So for instance, weekend, force click, that is so cool. And I actually use that quite often on my MacBook Pro. So I see myself using this just as often on my iMac. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. So let's go back over here. And by the way, you can right click by using two fingers. You simply click with two fingers and then boom, copy tweet or whatever you wanna do with the right click context. Let's close Final Cut Pro 10. Oh wait, hold on, example. This is why trackpads or even the Magic Mouse 2, this is why these kinds of mice are so much better than your typical mouse because you can scrub back and forth, left and right with your fingers 
and it is so, so useful. So let's zoom in. Actually, I think we can zoom in using two fingers. Yep, look at that. We're spreading our finger. I'm, I'm saying we, like it's multi. Hello? Nope, just me here. So I'm spreading my fingers and it's zooming in and I'm pinching and it's zooming out. So let's zoom in and using two fingers, let's scroll back and forth. That's huge. That is huge because with a mouse, you typically have to command plus and then use your mouse to drag the little slider down here. But again, with the magic mouse, you can also gesture. So between the magic trackpad and the magic mouse, I mean, I'm gonna say it again, these, in my opinion, these are the best ways to use Mac OS. But of course, I have to say this, this kind of experience is not for everybody. It's definitely not for everybody because, well, maybe the average person does prefer a typical mouse. And if that's the case, hey, more power to you. So if you do want a typical mouse, definitely check out the Logitech MX Master 3. That's probably one of the best mice you can get on the market right now. And I'm currently using the Logitech MX Master 2S, I believe it's called. Again, upstairs on my 2013 Mac Pro setup. And it's it's been great. It's not as fancy as something like the Magic Trackpad 2 or the Magic Mouse 2, but it definitely offers quite a bit of functionality using Logitech's software. Anyway, guys, there you go. There is my unboxing of the Magic Trackpad 2. I'm gonna be using this thing a lot. Is it gonna be my primary mouse? I don't know. I mean, I'm honestly not sure yet, but with that said, I'm gonna be keeping the Magic Mouse 2 on my desk just in case because I might prefer a typical mouse over a trackpad for certain things like Photoshop and stuff like that. But video editing, you simply cannot beat something like the Magic Trackpad. And the surface area is quite large. Check that out. It's quite big. Actually, it's about the size of my hand for a reference. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you want to buy the Magic Mouse on Amazon, yes, Amazon, um, I'll link it right below. It might be cheaper on Apple. I'm not sure because Apple prices tend to fluctuate on Amazon for whatever reason. But either way, for your convenience, I will link the Amazon link right below. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope you're having a great day, and I will talk to you later.